Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about states of matter and how they change and we're going to be talking about objective one in unit two, summing up how we define states of matter and then thinking about all those terms we use to describe those changes of phase. Uh, so let's go ahead and get out our Cornell paper. Okay, so uh, remember that over here is where your name and class period and date go. Make sure you are putting your name on your papers. And our topic that we're going to be talking about is Objective 1, States and Changes. We have a, a couple of essential questions that we're going to be asking. Let me pull those up. Distinguish between the states of matter. And our second question is distinguish between phase changes. Now, to get started here, I want to make a little note. Uh, and that is about the words state and phase. And that is that they are two words for the same thing. State of matter, phase of matter, same thing. So we're going to be using them interchangeably, and it doesn't matter which one I use or which one you use at any particular time. We're going to understand that we're talking about the same thing. Okay, so there are uh, three main states of matter. There's another one that a lot of people aren't incredibly familiar with. Uh, actually, there's two more that uh, are less familiar. Uh, we might write those down, I don't know. But the main ones we're going to be talking about in chemistry class are solid, liquid, and gas. And at this point in time, you should have already watched the first three videos that are listed in the Objective 1 folder. If you have not watched those yet, stop this video right now and go watch those because I'm going to be basing it on those videos. Okay, so um, in our last unit, we talked about solid, liquid, and gas a little bit uh, as far as particles went, um, you know, where they're close and far and that kind of thing. But now in this unit, we're talking about particles that move. And so in our solid, uh, let me zoom in here. That's not the zoom in tool. In our solid, we know that the particles are pretty close together. And so when we draw them, uh, we draw the particles close together, but they are still moving. But according to that video, they're just wiggling back and forth, dancing with each other. All right, so let's first talk about the particles in a solid, in a liquid, and a gas. And the particles in a solid are fixed in place. The particles in a liquid can slip past each other. and the particles in a gas are free to move about. They're all moving though, so let's compare their speed that they move with. Um, different color here, we'll go with speed. Uh, as far as solids go, they are slow, slower. Uh, liquids are, whoops, slower. Uh, we'll go with medium. And then for our gases, those are nice and fast. And I forgot to mention over here, uh, these solid particles, even though they are fixed in place, they are wiggling. They're all moving. It's just a matter of how fast and how far. So solid particles sit there and wiggle. Uh, liquid particles can slip past each other and gas particles just go all over the place. Yay for gas particles. Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about is um, when we draw those particles. Um, oh, oh, and we want to get some definition there. When we draw the solid particles, maybe these are my solid particles, to show that they're wiggling, we're going to draw something that we call whooshies. Whooshies is a technical term, uh, and let me write a little bit about whooshies here. Let's say you have a guy and another guy, and another guy, and we'll call this one A, B, and C. And A has no wishies, and B has those, and C has these. Who's moving the fastest? Did you pick C? Because if you did, that's great, because this is kind of uh, um, fundamental to our understanding of these particle diagrams that we're going to be drawing in this unit, is how to show that some particles are faster than others. So in order to show that they're faster, we either draw more or longer whooshies. De longer whooshies is generally the way to go here. So if our particle is just vibrating back and forth in one place, though, how do we draw those whooshies? Well, it's pretty easy. You draw little vibrating signs like this. 
And if you want to show that a particle is vibrating less, maybe you only put a little few. And if it's vibrating a lot more, then maybe you put a little bit more like that. And that is how we draw the whooshies for our solid particles to show that they're vibrating. Now when we draw the whooshies for our liquid particles, they're going to be a little bit different because those liquid particles can move past each other. So these guys might look like this. Maybe this one is going that way, and this one is going that way, and this one maybe it's going that way in like a little circle there. But they're moving, they're just not moving, uh, well, I don't know, maybe I don't know how fast they're going, but um, I'm going to draw my particles, my gas particles, moving faster because they move faster. Uh, but those are definitely different than the solid particles that you can see there. So my gas particles, if I'm going to draw some of those, they're going to look even more different. In fact, I should draw these guys apart from each other too. These guys are zooming around all over the place, super fast, right? So there's my nice long whooshies for my gas particles. Okay, so there we are looking at the difference between the, the particles there and the whooshies are how we show that they're moving. Okay, so that answers the part of the question about the solid, liquid, and gas. I do want to tell you some generic definitions of solid, liquid, and gas because it's helpful to know how we define them. Um, especially for the homework. So the definition of solid is that it has a definite shape and a definite volume. Um, that means that you know what shape the solid is and you know how much space it takes up. Turning your to look away and look back, it's going to be exactly the same. For example, a chair, there it is, there's the chair, that's how big it is. Tomorrow when you come back, it's going to be the same size, it's going to take about the same amount of space, it's going to be the same shape. That is a solid. Now, a, a liquid has a changing shape and a definite volume. A liquid, um, it always takes up the same amount of space, but depending on what container you put it in, it might have a different shape. Uh, so that's one of the ways that we can tell the difference between a liquid and a solid. Uh, the last one, a gas... has a changing shape and a changing volume. That means that uh, the gas, we can compress it into a little bitty space or we can, when we open up a, um, a, a two liter bottle, you hear the psh of all the gas coming out. It's, it's spreading out to take up all the space that it can. Um, and then it changes shape too. Whatever container you put it in, you've seen a clown turn a long balloon into a puppy dog at some point in time, I'm sure, even if only on TV. So we can change the shape of those gases. Okay, so let's flip over to the back of our Cornell paper. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is those phase changes. And we'll look at all the different phase changes that there are, but some of them will be less important for our purposes. So let me write up the phases. Okay, so to talk about these different phase changes, I've got my little map here of going from solid, liquid, and gas uh, back and forth between, and I'm going to kind of color code these uh, because they're generally associated, associated with cooling or warming, uh, but we'll learn a little bit more about the temperature that is involved with the phase changes a little bit later. Um, but the idea is still that we're gaining energy or losing energy. So we'll start with the ones that people know. Uh, when you go from a solid to a liquid, we call that melting. When you go from a liquid to a solid, we call that freezing. What we're doing is we're changing energy to be able to do those things because the particles um, they have to get closer, um, they might do a little bit of slowing down, but it's really about getting closer or farther apart, which we'll also talk about in a later objective. So um, if we want to go from a liquid to a gas, um, uh, we call that evaporation. And if we go the other way, from a gas to a liquid, we call that condensation. So um, the other ones that you probably aren't familiar with is when you go between a solid and a gas. Um, and if you go from a gas straight, whoops, well, if you go from a solid straight to a gas, we call that sublimation. That's what dry ice does, if you've ever seen dry ice before. And the other one we call a deposition, and deposition is how snowflakes are formed and frost on your car. 
Um, so, so those are all the different phase changes there. So, so let's talk about how we are going to draw pictures of phase changes. For these, we general, generally draw a, a before, a during, and an after box. So let me label those here. And in our picture, we might, uh, let me get to zoom in here. We, uh, we might zoom in a little bit here and then think about it. So, so let's say we have a, uh, let's, draw, let's draw melting, for example. So in our before picture, we need to have a solid. So we'll draw our particles kind of close together. And remember, our particles move now. So I'm going to give them a, uh, a little bit of movement. Now these are solid particles, so they're just wiggling back and forth. Remember, they're dancing with each other. Uh, they're not really going anywhere. They're just sitting there, vibrating back and forth. Okay. Now, during the phase change, um, something a little bit different happens. During the phase change, those particles start to spread out. And maybe some of them stop just vibrating in place. So maybe some of these are vibrating and some of these have started uh, wiggling around, uh, sliding past each other a little bit more. So there's kind of a mixture of my solid and liquid as it's turning over to a liquid. And then in my last picture, then I would have nothing but liquid. So I've got to have the same number of particles. They're a little bit farther apart. And now instead of just vibrating, they're kind of wiggling around a little bit more. So now I have a total liquid here. So that is what we mean when we talk about drawing the before, during, and after picture. I've got a mix going on there in the middle, and I have a, a solid to begin with and a liquid to end with. So freezing would probably look exactly the opposite of this. Um, and then you can imagine what a going from a liquid to a gas might be. Um, in your homework, I think you're going to have to draw a whole bunch of these diagrams, so make sure you pay attention to what you start with and what you end with, and then it's just kind of a mixture of those two phases in the middle, okay? Um, if you have any questions, make sure you let your teacher know. Thanks for watching.